Welcome back. This is Shadow Coast with Shadow Coast Gaming, and we are playing Warhammer 40,000 Gladius Relics of War, and we are having a blast. I really like this game so far. In this episode, we are going to do a how to play Space Marines. I don't claim or purport to be an expert, but we are, I think, 97 turns into this particular campaign, and I've learned a lot, and I like to share it with you. So we're going to run through uh, general basics, then um, some unique aspects to the Space Marines. Um, and uh, hopefully you guys find this video helpful. Please post for those who have played the game more. I think I'm like three or four hours in. Um, open to suggestions, recommendations to share with the community. So Space Marines, right? The first thing that I'm going to focus on is the operations, or actually up here the resources. Each faction has a unique resource that you use to build and maintain or support units. For Space Marines that is requisitioned, which I think we're normally used to given other Warhammer 40,000 games. So to build requisition or to obtain requisition or generate it, you can do it in a few ways. The first is from a building that you can build right off the bat, Contract Refectory, which gives roughly 5.4 or potentially more depending on which resource tile you build on. So for those of you new with the game, if you hover over a resource um, tile or if you plan on building something, excuse me, you can actually see. So here we have plus 20% to requisition, that little four triangle symbol, and plus 10% to energy. So that's how you get requisition. The next piece is energy. So energy basically is used to power your buildings and you can get that in a couple ways too. Um, mainly by creating uh, genitoriums for the space marines. Again, you want to make sure that you're building on those plus areas. So we are good on energy. However, <laughs> if we need additional energy, we would probably want to put it on this plus 20% tile. Right? Now one thing to note here when we're looking at this thing in the I get middle right screen on this particular tile we can see it's a desert brush space marine city because we have acquired this tile to build. We get plus 20% for energy building on it which is fantastic and that little white symbol with the three pieces together with the three next to it to the right that means that we can place or build three buildings in this tile. Now. One thing that I learned is that we need population based off the number of buildings we have. And to do that, and this is something you actually research, which we'll look for in a little bit when I go through what I believe is the optimized build for Space Marine research in a little bit here, um, you need dormitories to um, expand. So as we build this dormitory, it will unlock, I believe, six additional um, building slots for us as we expand out. Now I'm just going to queue this up for us. Do we have a launch pad yet? Which is a little wing symbol and I don't believe we do. So we are going to build a launch pad and we are going to also build a generator so we um, capitalize on that. So here um, we'll be producing more. And then we're also going to want to acquire another tile. Um, let me see here. I think we're going to want to keep accelerating our research so we'll acquire a tile over there. Alright, so that's how we obtain energy and requisition. The next piece is research. So we produce a certain level of, or amount of research per turn. Um, and then when we hit the maximum, it resets to zero. So for example, we need 55 uh, research for Hammer of Wrath. And I believe if we have 180, if we switch to that, we would get this next turn. Um, and you know what? What are we researching right now? If I'm not mistaken. We, and we'll go into this tree a lot more. We're researching Terminators, so we're going to keep Terminators as is for now. Right? Now, to obtain or generate more research, we can construct a librarium for the Space Marines. And then here again you will have tiles that have plus research, so here we have plus 10% research. So you really want to optimize and look at the tiles and make sure you're building uh, requisition, energy, and research, as well as influence, which is our final piece. Now influence is interesting. Influence is used to recruit and maintain heroes, 
and heroes we have right now we can recruit a librarian and a captain we have one of each um, over here so this is our librarian this is our captain fantastic units um, I prefer the captain just the damage output and tankiness which is fantastic but as you can see down here each one costs influence and then their upkeep is both requisition and influence to gain influence no surprise we can build another building the Asimilarium uh, to generate influence per turn. Now for all of these four primary resources there are other things we can do. When we capture outposts they produce and they give us bonuses to various things and this is really important because right now I have a bunch of outposts giving me plus 20% research, giving me plus generation to influence, producing influence in other aspects and energy. Should I start losing these different outposts, these could swing fairly quickly and negatively out of my favor. So it's always important to watch your outposts and make sure that you're not overutilizing them because as you can see, the Necrons are slowly moving and encroaching um, on me. They have a city over here that I try to take out. Unfortunately, it's very difficult to, to destroy a city and um, they killed half my fighting force. So these are the remaining uh, forces who are slowly retreating back um, to our main base where I hope to bring up some support in the form of a Devastator Marine and we are also producing units. Now the next thing I wanted to focus on here is influence and operations. Operations allow us to do a lot of things. At the beginning you can deploy your city and you have your pick of the litter. You can uh, pretty much deploy almost anywhere, although I do recommend you look at surrounding tiles so as you expand out you get those plus requisition bonus, plus energy bonus, and plus influence bonus, which is uh, very important. Every 10 turns for 150, we can deploy a fortress or redemption. Basically, this is a fortress that can um, we can place almost anywhere on the map. It, uh, you know, that has a laser turret or last cannon turret, what does it have here? A twin linked last cannon, uh, which is fantastic. And it's basically an outpost or defense post that will fire on enemies. So every 10 turns, we can put one down. I recommend generating a lot of influence. You can see here I'm generating a ton of influence per turn because I wanna put one down every chance I get to secure my borders and slow down enemies coming up. Finally, we can research different pieces that leverage influence such as orbital strikes that do direct damage to individuals as well as doctrines that enhance uh, different unit capabilities. Right now we only have one doctrine researched and that is for our tactical space marines which I'm a big fan of. So let's talk research and units simultaneously. Right Now the way research works for those of you new to the game is once you research two two items within a tier you open up the next tier right so my first piece that I researched was frag grenade I wanted to be able to have infinite anti-infantry weaponry early in the game the second one was the reclusium um, and and that allows us to produce heroes now in this campaign I actually went with armory but I do recommend getting the frag grenade and reclusium the reason I rec recommend you get this Reclusium is because that's the building, once you build it, that allows you to recruit hero units. And I highly recommend that you get a captain on the field immediately. This guy has proven to be invaluable. He has Power Strike, which is fantastic. Um, and I think that you can see here, I've already used my attack in turn. Um, same, same with the Librarian. And I would use him and level him up as quickly as possible. Now, one quick thing I'll, I will mention, like all um, units in the game, experience matters. So as they get experience, they get 5% to hit points, 5% to damage, and morale boost. So you want to keep your units grouped together so they, when you kill enemy units, they all get a bonus. So just keep that in the back of your mind. So back to research. I recommend frag grenade, reclusium as your first two. Then I would jump to crack grenade, anti-armor grenade for those heavier enemy units. 
I then would recommend actually grabbing the armory before then grabbing dormitories. You're going to want to get dormitories early because as you build buildings you'll run out of space, right? Now I have not used the tactical doctrine yet, um, although increasing accuracy could prove useful. I just haven't leveraged it a lot, but it's something to consider. I would say that the next piece would be important to get is the Devastator Space Marines. These guys, they have better range, they do a lot of damage, they also are capable of carrying various grenades. So here we can see, where is our Devastator unit? Right here. They carry frag grenades as well as crack grenades. One thing I would mention though is... Um, tactical Space Marines are the best bang for your buck in my opinion because they can carry every type of grenade including melt-a-bombs that are anti-vehicle um, grenades. So let's get back to research. Alright, so to recap, Frag Grenade, Reclusium, Crack Grenade, Armory, Dormitories, Devastator Marines, and here it's up to you. I don't use land speeders that much, but there's an argument for it if you really like them. And I haven't been using assault space marines that much. I've been focused more on range, but that's my personal playstyle. I do like fortress expansion because then we can uh, expand the acquisition radius of the city um, for that quick expansion and production. So after these two, or you know, the devastator along with anything else that you'd like. For tier 4, I would immediately get Melta Bombs, then Kraken Bolts to increase that damage, right? I personally went with Predator um, early. I think I went Melta Bomb Predator, and the Predator is my favorite unit. This harkens back to Dawn of War 1, 2, and 3, I think. I don't know if Predators were on all of them, but they just look awesome. They do a lot of damage, and um, eventually we can upgrade them to get even better. So I'd recommend getting these three, Kraken, Meltabomb, Kraken Bolts, Meltabomb, as well as the Predator. I uh, never, I haven't gotten the Hunter yet. I might go back and check it out. Um, skimmers and Flyers uh, would be useful. But again, I just more went with Predators. And you can see on my map, I produced two of them, uh, which have fairly heavy experience. So I'm going to try not to lose them. Um, and they've been proved very useful in taking out enemy... Uh, vehicles and uh, structures which is fantastic after the predator you have to make a call do you keep progressing up the tier chain or do you go back and grab some more I recommend I got the librarian because that is part of your chapter 2 quest so to take a step back and understand victory conditions there are a couple ways you can win one is exterminate all the other AI uh, competitors or, or enemy uh, competitors. The second option is to complete a long quest chain. So it's good and important to do progress on both because as you complete quests you get bonuses such as requisition and other uh, potential items or added benefits. Highly recommend that you do that. Um, so this is part of it. If you're looking towards the mission aspect or quest aspect you're going to want to come back and grab the librarian at some point fairly you know fairly early if you're looking to progress your quest quick I um I did not I waited to come back and get it uh, which is fine you could also pick up some doctrines if you want but it's really just determined by your play style all right I did pick up uh, orbital relay which to be frank I built an extra one and I'm not I have to do a little more research or a little more home homework to understand I was hoping um, that it, this would allow me to um, uh, build two things at once. I think it just speeds up the production of uh, various things, if I'm not mistaken. But I'll have to get back to you on that. And please post if you know. Alright, moving into Tier 5, um, after you go back and get the various items, I actually went with, um, I would, in retrospect, I would recommend going with Increased armor of infantry. I use a lot of infantry, a lot of devastators, a lot of tactical marines. So I want to keep them alive. Then I get Dreadnought and Orbital Strike. The Thunderfire Cannon has been relatively lackluster in my opinion. It is fire support. Um, it does. They do have flamethrowers, uh, which look kind of cool. 
Um, but for the most part, I, uh, I don't really leverage them that heavily. Although, if I'm not mistaken, we are building another one here just to mean sure, mean, you know, ensure that we have a ni nice variety of um, long range weaponry. So this one is longer range, but it, I, it hasn't proved that useful, at least against the Necrons in my opinion. These three though, highly recommend. Orbital Strike I think is really important. The way that I leverage it is I like to have a lot of influence, and if a unit's almost dead and I need to do 8 to 10 damage on them, I'll drop this to do, you know, roughly 10 damage with the armor penetration to ensure that I secure the kill, um, which which is very helpful. So, you know what we're going to do here as an example? Let's see, these guys have 12 um, and 9 armor, so they this penetrates 10 armor, and so I think... You know, it did half, so you want to make sure, based off bonuses and other aspects, that you're really confident you're going to take them out. But these guys will retreat now, which we're fine with because we're facing a fair number of Necrons from this direction. So I do recommend getting Orbital Strike. It's just a finishing move to make sure if you get them down pretty low, you can take them out. Next, um, these are, again, personal preference. Um... I do think I'm going to go back and get Bolter Drill. I went for the Vindicator, and we have a Vindicator over here. I think he's already used his move. Yes, he has. Um, but, uh, you know, pretty solid Demolisher can Cannon, uh, fairly close range, decent accuracy. You can see here, traits Large Blast um, and Ordnance, increase the armor penetration against vehicles. Uh, and then we also have a Dreadnought here, which is... Which is um, you know, awesome. Uh, and it looks like here we do have a Thunderfire Cannon. And so we're going to move him out to support. One thing I would note is this cannon shoots from afar. But if you see this guy, and I love the graphics in this game, he does have flamethrowers and I think a Bolter Cannon attached to his back, which is pretty cool. So we will see that here shortly because uh, I will play a Turner too. Alright, so I recommend getting the Vindicator, especially playing against other enemy armored units. Um, I do, I would in retrospect recommend Bolter Drill. I'm using a lot of, um, a lot of Bolter weapons, and um, I do like the Apothecaries. They've been able to keep several units alive. We do have one over here somewhere there there they are they can per turn they can kind of heal different units not tanks though um, they have moved and I think these guys are fully are these guys are not fully healed so we will um, oh, they've already done their their move unfortunately I think I had them heal another another unit um, but that's nice. If we read this, just so you can see, they re heal eight hit points, which is fantastic. If you're doing what I'm doing with a lot of tactical marines, a lot of devastator marines, highly recommend one or two apothecary units to keep them up. Next, I went to launch pads to build um, aircraft, and then I went terminators, and I do plan on getting orbital deployment. Grants out units the ability to deploy via drop pod anywhere in the battlefield. Um, quite frankly, all of these are fantastic, so I'll be filling them in as I go. Um, I do plan on trying to progress after orbital deployment. I'm going to just work my way up, and I do plan on getting... I don't need to expand the city that much more. I'll come back and get this later, um, but I do plan on getting... Um, um, uh, what is it? The shield for Vindicators, and the flesh is weak. Um, damage reduction to interest, uh, infantry units, especially if I unlock a bunch of bunch of enemies that are going to take out some of my infantry. I do like the idea of being able to um, reduce the damage they take. For tier nine, looking at this, I um, I was planning on getting a ceramite plating, ceramite plating, for our storm raven and storm telling gunships. Um, from melted weapons to keep them protected and I 
uh, predator heavy bolters, right? I do also plan on getting uh, storm storm raving gunships and teleport Homer, um, just just to protect us in the long run. But I'll probably come back to it, uh, or at least I believe I'll come back to it, because what I really want to do is get Fortress of Redemption missile silo. Adding a crack storm missile silo uh, to the fortress will be very helpful. Um, and then I'm gonna get uh, hunter killer missiles and honestly like all of these with the priority would be the redemption missile so that's my research strategy again um, I'm not perfect and I might adapt and in full transparency we were only playing on hard um, I wanted this is basically my own tutorial to learn learn by doing so let's uh, let's take a few turns here I know I didn't cover everything um, but uh, I, I uh, hopefully covered enough to kind of give you a how to play uh, Space Marines tutorial basic. Now one thing that I would note, and we're going to actually pull these guys back. Um, so they're targeting my Fortress of Redemption. So we are going to come meet them and try to take them down. Now one thing that I would note is um, I had a question on for chapter one it said deploy a fortress or redemption near a resource tile what that really means guys is an outpost I would secure an outpost then drop your fortress or redemption next to your outpost so if you're having trouble or trying to figure out like how do I do that quest um, that's what I would do so respond to these guys because we don't really appreciate us and they're probably gonna back up we are going to move the majority of our forces to meet the enemy here and um, apothecaries can kind of come in now one thing this guy can do is levitate which is pretty cool and we're not going to do it right now. Um, we are going to just regularly move him and keep him on overwatch. So let's see if we can um, take some action. And we can shoot these guys. going to skip the city and then turn so you guys can see some of these guys in action so they did take two outposts and a fortress of redemption out it looks like they're coming at us so we will have um, several people firing on them which is fantastic oh geez so these guys are doing considerable damage. So we're going to back up. Awesome, we now have terminators. We're going to bring these guys back. And now that we have terminators, um, debating now I do I do want orbital deployment and we're gonna work our way up before coming back down all right we do have a second vindicator um, I'm more concerned with the Necrons than the wildlife if I'm being honest um, so here you can see Thunder Fire. 1.3, you know, decent damage, could be a little bit better, but, um, let's see if we can take these guys out, we do have, they are living metal, so this frag grenade might not be as efficient. No, I didn't think it would be. Uh, 
Oh, we can't shoot him from there. Let's see. We have successfully taken him out. And we're capturing this piece. So that gives you kind of a flavor. Now, one thing I didn't mention is there are artifacts. Some of them will give you unclaimed items. Um, plus two armor. Let me see, what do we have here? Plus 25% hit points. 12 armor, 10 armor. So we're going to give this guy plus two armor. You can see here he's at 12. And, oops, passive action. Plus one armor. Oops, what did I do with it? Okay. I, that's embarrassing. Did I just get rid of it? He still has... I think I might have accidentally destroyed it, guys. That is super embarrassing, but... Live and learn. Don't move items out, because they don't go back. They just... I thought... Um, interesting. Okay. You have this activated. When the chap captain gains experience, we get influence per turn, which is fantastic. Uh, we definitely want to leverage that. So, that was dumb of me. Watch your items. Be careful as you move them. Wildlife will take outposts and um, artifacts, so that's important to note and just kind of remember. Now we're building all this stuff, which is great, but we are low on upkeep, so I'm wondering if we actually... Um, where do we have... Do we have any other space? What I'd like to do is let's clear something off that has 20%. Yeah, we'll clear that one off. And then we will we will eventually build some more requisition bonuses there just to support our larger army. Now one thing we're gonna do is we're gonna bring the majority of our armored units and we're gonna give this this um you can see they're reclaiming it for themselves. It gives plus loyalty. Alright, we're taking losses. Oof, we're gonna... Ow. So, I think we should be able to push this guy off, and you're going to see now, perfect example, units around also get that 1.6 plus um, benefit, which is fantastic. Now, we are going to bring these guys here, and these are heavy destroyers. We're going to check out how Meltabomb is, the neck run's a little weird. Whoa. Okay, so that worked. Um, oops. That's not what I wanted to do. Okay. So we're gonna move these guys. Are they in range of bombs? No. These guys will be. And they only have crack grenades, so we are going to 3.6 versus their accuracy is down because they move. So you have to account for. Move 
with the captain in. Now those guys are most likely going to retreat. Um, we do have another Hellfire Storm. Um, excuse me, what are these called? Thunderfire Cannons, which we're going to leave there. Alright, so as you can see, I have the majority of my forces on one side. I am going to bring these two up, and I'm probably going to retreat back one or two tactical space marines. We are going to do a full-on assault of their Necron base with two Devastators, two Predators, two Vindicators, one Dreadnought, and see how that pans out for us. So let's take a look. Um, we can leverage our librarian who is going to injure them further although I suspect they will be able to escape all right one turn for this new tile we're gonna build some more requisition and we will also build an energy uh, production here now one of the reasons these are dropping so quick is we've lost a few outposts so that's something I keep in mind is that if you have a bunch of outposts that's great but they could go away and when they do go away um, eventually that that will um, definitely swing your resource management out of your favor or potentially back into your favor so I just recommend making sure that your city can more or less support the majority of your units. I have a lot of units on the field right now. I would argue um, more than maybe I, I probably should, but that's okay. Now we're going to check down and have him heal up. And this guy is just going to be our kind of chill in the base dude. I'm going to send our librarian here. And he does have a mission. Oh, what is that? I didn't even see that in there. Um, oh, wow. Took that guy right out. One thing I need to do is head over here for a librarian mission, which I briefly spoke about. We are going to have these guys heal up, and we're going to move our armor into position. So these guys are going to actually watch this. Now we could have moved these guys into the outpost to heal faster, but what we instead did was um, had them heal back up so they will be full health next turn thanks to our apothecarium. Um, and we want to put our other units in proper positioning um, for that. And this guy we're going to bring up Alright, so we have, I think, we're in a good spot. We're going to come in, and we're going to come in from two angles. We're going to send two tanks this way, two tanks this way, a tank that way, just surround that city and kill everybody. So let's see, unit production. We're not producing anything yet, but we are going to produce some Terminators um, and get that orbital deployment. Thanks for watching, everyone. We will be playing a lot more of Gladius. Please post, please subscribe. If you want to see me play a race, I promise, I promise, once I learn this game, we will be throwing this on impossible mode and really challenging ourselves. Um, but for now, we're only playing on hard, learning the game. I hope you enjoyed this and found it helpful. Um, and again, I'm no expert. For those who are better experts, please post. Let me know how I can improve if you have suggestions. I'd love to hear. Catch you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.